Hello, welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, coming to you from the campuses of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. Our program, part of Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture of the uh, Digital Pathology Association and PATH presenter. Uh, today's case comes from the realm of G GYN pathology. A 39-year-old woman has uh, been discovered to have a unilateral ovarian cystic mass uh, that is somewhat uh, complex. So uh, surgical remov removal is performed and uh, the lesion is found to be about uh, 12 centimeters with a, uh, a multilocular cystic wall that has some papillary uh, excrescences on the surface. So of course, common things are common and most likely one would think about a, a serous neoplasm. Um, uh, and of course, along with that, uh, we see with this type of complexity here, a lot of second order branching that would make us think of a borderline tumor. However, as we look at uh, higher magnification, uh, something becomes a little bit evident. Um, one is that this is not typical uh, serous uh, epithelium. These are not uh, cuboidal to uh, slightly columnar epithelial cells. These are fairly elongated and tufted papillary uh, structures with mostly round nuclei and we have lots of uh, mucin in the cytoplasm of these cells. Uh, so uh, that's a little bit unusual to uh, begin with um, and should make us start thinking about other possibilities. So as we look around a little bit further, we see that some of these cells, like right here, uh, we have uh, apparently uh, some cilia uh, in the uh, cytoplasmic uh, apices. Uh, and as we look a little bit further, we can find some uh, <clears throat> terminal bars on some of these cells as well to indicate there's some uh, ciliated structure. Uh, so uh, it looks as though we've got uh, some mucin and some ciliated or serous type of epithelium uh, in a sense here uh, that it is uh, forming this tissue. Uh, so with the complex architecture, we want to make sure that we don't have any evidence of uh, invasion. And so looking at an area like this to make sure that uh, this is not uh, an invasive uh, component or microinvasive component of the tumor would be uh, fruitful. Looking a little further, uh, we can see that generally everywhere we've got either a uh, an associated stroma or a fibrous mural uh, tissues so that we don't have, have any evidence of destructive or microscopic invasion in these sections. And of course, sampling uh, thoroughly uh, would be important in a setting like this. Let's just take another look at the uh, busy epithelium here in this location. And I think you can get a flavor that this is distinct from um, uh, typical serous uh, neoplasia and also does not quite fit into the category of mucinous tumor. So uh, given that sort of hybrid appearance, uh, when these were first described, they were grouped uh, into a separate group and termed seromucinous or mixed mullerian uh, mucinous uh, and uh, other type of epithelium. So <clears throat> seromucinous uh, or mixed mullerian ovarian tumors uh, do have this uh, distinctive uh, epithelial morphology, uh, and were first noted uh, at least in 1976. Um, a later series with uh, Dr. Scully and others uh, showed that uh, about a third of the cases seem to have associated <coughs> endometriosis, uh, raising the possibility that these were an endometriosis-derived tumor. Uh, further evidence uh, for that comes from the frequent uh, loss of BAF250A, which uh, seems to indicate a high frequency of ARID1A mutation. Immunohistochemistry, chemically, these are distinct from serous tumors. While they are ERPR and PAX8 positive, they're WT1 negative, um, and so they don't fit uh, very well into the serous category. Uh, they can be CK7 positive, or usually are, uh, and are obviously not enteric lesions because they're CK20 and CDX2 negative. Now, borderline, uh, <clears throat> in situ neoplastic and minimally invasive, as well as malignant types have been described. And the criteria that uh, Kerman and his group used in, in the defining these uh, lesions was similar to what we use in other uh, 
uh, ovarian epithelial neoplasms. The complex papillary architecture that we saw in, our, in this case is uh, what defines the atypical proliferative or borderline category. When you combine with that a degree of cy cytologic atypia with enlarged nuclei, hyperchromatic nuclei, vesicular or coarsely chromatin, you can make the diagnosis of seromucinous uh, uh, neoplasm with intraepithelial carcinoma. And then uh, evidence of invasion, uh, five millimeters is the cutoff between microinvasive uh, versus uh, simply invasive carcinoma. So that's a nice uh, little rundown. What happens to these patients um, over the course of uh, time is uh, quite interesting. And Kerman's study, fairly good sized uh, group of this unusual neoplasm, showed that uh, these stage one tumors, um, even with invasive carcinoma, um, had uh, very good survival. Um, for those with greater than stage one disease, this, the, the uh, experience was still pretty good. Um, especially in the uh, certainly low-grade borderline and uh, um, cytologically atypical <coughs> lesions, with only a, a very small minority who died of disease <coughs> overall, though some still retain disease at uh, follow-up. So our final sign-out diagnosis of this case is seromucinous borderline tumor of the ovary. Well, thank you for joining us for this case discussion, uh, a little foray into a less frequently observed uh, ovarian neoplasm. We hope that if you like this, that you'll uh, subscribe and uh, share this with others. And certainly, uh, uh, we'd love to hear from you with, with comments, uh, suggestions, um, and other thoughts on uh, our channel. So again, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll hope to see you next time.